Tuesday, December 10th edition of Good Morning Football presented by Intuit QuickBooks. We're live in New York. My name's Kay Adams. What up? Nate Burleson, Peter Schrager, Kyle Brandt, and highlights from last night to get you up to date on. It was the Giants. It was the Eagles in a rainy Philadelphia. It really was. I think we should see some action because there was plenty of it, especially early from New York Giants great. Here he is. Mr. Steel, yo, girl. There he is, number 10. Once hosted SNL. A couple times, I think. Last time he had Rihanna was the musical guest. There's Peyton, also did it. And he was there in Philadelphia, in the link for support. And early on, Eli had it going. I think it was hashtag vintage. That's Darius Slayton, the rook from Auburn. Got in for a big touchdown. There's high fives. I don't know if there's hot toddies or whatever they do in the Manning family. I bet it's beautiful, though. And once again, second quarter, same guy, Darius Slayton. There he goes. Shermer was asked afterwards, why did you guys go away from Darius Slayton? He did nothing in the second half. And he had an ornery response, as you would expect. Ooh. Ornery there from the Eagles fan, because they're about to have their season ended by the Giants. And yet, despite all this, they I'm kept fighting. Bad. Alshon Jeffrey, non-contact, on the card. MRI on the way. And this right isn't. Tackle. Watch Lane Johnson. Johnson Stalwart right tackle. Goes into his left ankle. He's on the card. So you lose your number one receiver, your big tackle, you already have problems with Miles Sanders, and all kinds of things. Cats' heads are falling off, as they say. 17 to 10 now. New York, though, really decides to battle. They go to Dallas Goddard. There's an irony in going to Dallas this time of year from them. They go to him. He's wide open. And then it was just Ertz. Ertz just Ertzing all over the field. Ertz, 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 Ertz. Ertz, touchdown, two-yard variety. And a bunch of drops last week into Dolphins. It was a major statement from Ertz. They tied at 17. They go to overtime. They win the toss. Eli is forced to sit there and just watch Philly go right down the field. Guys, Ertz, ball game over. Zach Ertz told Mike Garofolo afterwards he had to play some wide receiver in the second half because they were so banged up, and he knows the offense so well that he can do it. And there goes Eli. Running off the field as a starter for maybe the last time, maybe the last time as a giant, maybe the last time ever, came and gave us some fireworks in the first half. They just got shut down in the second half. They're not a great team. They've lost nine games in a row. They lose this one 23-17 to the very alive first place Philadelphia Eagles. And the guy I mentioned, Mike G, who's always all over the Carson Wentz food truck beat, caught up with Zach Ertz and asked him, how was the team able to turn things around in the second half? What happened? We just stopped being ourselves, man. In the first half, we had untimely penalties. We had bad snaps at times. And we were just killing ourselves. The first 12 weeks of the season, we've been killing ourselves. We just said at halftime, let's see how tough we are, not only physically, but mentally especially. Um, and let's leave it all out there tonight because we had to win this game. It was a must win. Our defense did an unbelievable job in the second half. And the offense, we just banded together. I mean, I was playing receiver at the end of the game because we didn't have any more bodies. Um, so we just had to find a way. Zach Ertz hit up the NFL Instagram, too, saying, believe in us, we're here, we've got the effort, we're going to make it happen the rest of the way. We're looking at the playoff picture. Eagles now pulling into a tie with the Cowboys for the NFC East lead. The Cowboys do have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. Both teams meet again in Week 16. It's a hard thing to imagine guys like Boston, Scott, and Perk going and beating Dallas, winning the division, and making noise in the playoffs. So what are the actual concerns with this team going forward? The Eagles are depleted with all these injuries, right? So if you didn't watch last night, in the game, Alshon Jeffrey goes out on a cart. Lane Johnson goes out on a cart. Miles Sanders leaves for some time, comes back. J.J. Arcega-Whiteside leaves for some mm -hmm. time, comes back. They were at such a low level with the roster that they had Josh McCown, the 40-year-old 40 40 backup quarterback, lining up in receiver during not the a job. It really he happened. was ready to go. So, okay, my concern is that there's just not enough juice there. That said, the Cowboys have all the juice. Mm. Everyone's healthy. I, you know, with the exception of Leighton Van Der Esch, Cowboys have all your stars, your Zeeks, your Dax. And, and the Eagles look like they had more fight last night. Like, the Eagles seem to really want this thing. Cowboys go to play Buffalo at home on Thanksgiving, lay an egg, have a 17-yard scoring drive to start the game, and then completely lay an egg in Chicago. Here the Eagles are down 17 to three and they found it. I don't know where they found it. It was this deep, deep place in their locker room, but they found it to answer the call and win. This one is going to go down to the wire, and whereas the Cowboys have all their guns and have all their weapons. All the star power in the world. The Eagles are going to rely on guys like Josh Perkins, and they're going to rely on guys like Boston Scott and Greg Ward. You know what? That might just be the story of the 2017 Eagles. Mm -hmm. It might also be the story of the 2019 Eagles, because you remember, they lost Jason Peters. They lost Wentz. Like, maybe they need to be a little injured. Maybe they need to find it from guys who are unsung. I f I'm finding it very fascinating how this plays out, because the Cowboys have no excuses. It, and there's no reason to believe in them. I, I'm trying, but it, to your point, 
point. Look what Philly does. They come out of nowhere in a team. They're, they're losing two on the road. This is the end of the end of the game. You know, it, it reminds me with it pretends the Cowboys. Jerry Jones comes on the show, and Nate asks him a very pointed question about Dak Prescott's contract. And Jerry said, "We're just trying to win a game." And I thought that was very human of him because they can't right now. And are you telling me they're going to go against the Rams? And you have any expectation that the surging Rams, that the Dallas Cowboys are going to get off the mat like Philly did last night? No. And I don't care who plays. I don't care if McCown isn't wide receiver. All the momentum and as little of there might be is on Philly. I can't have any reason to respect Cowboys right now. Mm. Yeah. Peter, you mentioned the juice, and you're right. You don't know where they can get the juice from with so many guys banged up on that Eagles roster. And on the flip side, the Cowboys, I mean, seem like they got the juice in a squeeze because they have all their guys healthy, right? They have coaches that are on the hot seat, so they're literally coaching for their lives. Some of these guys are playing for their contracts. Amari Cooper, Dak Prescott, and yet and still – I still want to go with the Eagles because of the energy that they're bringing to the table. The only thing that concerns me about the Philadelphia Eagles roster, it's not about the guys that are unfamiliar names. It's about the unfamiliar names not knowing the playbook mm. as the starters do. Because now you're putting the defense coordinator, offense coordinator, you're putting these guys in a poor position. Because now you can't open up the playbook for these three important games because these young guys are playing backup or were playing backup the entire season. We're talking about individuals practice squad that don't, yeah, that have literally have t taken no reps with the starters. So you're sitting back trying to create a game plan that might be a little bit basic in nature. So it's up to the coaching staff, not the players. The players will be just fine. This league is built off of individuals taking th their opportunity as they come. And this is that time where you kick down the door. Mm -hmm. Who's injured? Mm -hmm. Alshon's out? Mm -hmm. No Deshaun Jack? Cool. I got you. Let Ward, I got you. Let me go ahead and get it. Let me make a name for myself. But it's the coaching staff. This is going to have to be the most impressive coaching outing for the rest of the season. Somebody's got to win the East. You know, it's not going to be the Giants, but all eyes were on our guy, Eli Manning. Last night, his family was in town. We saw glimpses of Peyton Manning, his wife, Abby, never really travels to road games. They were all there to support their guy. And here's what their guy, Eli, had to say about how important it was to have his family support. She came early on in, uh, in my career. She kind of said she would never come back to a Philly game. Uh, just, you know, fans can be kind of rough in there, but, uh, she thought, you know, she she had to break, uh, kind of break her her rule and, and come for this one. Why? Why was it important this one? Uh, well, I haven't, I haven't played in three months, you know, so and you don't know if I'm gonna play again. So I think uh, I think it's pretty obvious why it was important. Do we think that we've seen the last of Eli Manning? What did you guys think of what you saw out there? How did it go? I've got an email chain with a bunch of my friends from, mm -hmm. from childhood. They're all Giants fans, and they all were saying the same thing. What a first half. How cool would it have been if Eli just rode off into the sunset after that first half? Up 17-3, to three, historic. There, that was it. Retire. That was the Eli experience. Retire, like, call it a day. Like, I know he doesn't want to retire necessarily, but that was such a cool first half. Mm -hmm. And if you're a Giants fan, this is a lost season in a myriad of lost seasons the past few years. There's a, not a lot to rally around. At the very least, it felt like you could relive those good years of 2007, 2011, and some of those other playoff runs. Pretty cool to see Eli play his A game. But it only lasted for a half. They had about 30 yards of offense in the second half, and it ended the way every game's ended this season for the Giants. You know, I wanted the schmaltzy thing. It's a season of miracles. I wanted it. Yeah. It was kind of sad. I mean, Eli chucking and ducking to some rookie right wide receiver in the middle of a nine-game losing streak in the rain in a game that they would lose. Um, it was a little sad. I liked that the Eagles fans, the Eagles players, rather, came and showed him special respect they afterwards. Did. I saw that. It's interesting about his future just because of all the years for Eli to come free and clear. I mean, it's like we're talking... Cam, Jameis, Mariota, Dalton, Tannehill, Rivers, Brady. Like, there's a lot of names out there for a team that would want Eli as a starter. And they said on the call last night, Eli's like, I don't want to be a backup and I don't want to be a coach. So I think that means he wants to be retired. That losing record now, huh? 116 and 117. You don't think he wants to start somewhere? I do. Yeah. I don't think anyone wants yeah. him to start. I, I mean, do you? There's a lot of others. Yeah. I don't think he wants to retire, bro. I, I, I don't think, think he does either. I don't think anybody wants Eli to be their starter If next you year. take what he said about not wanting to be a coach mm -hmm. and not wanting to be a backup, and then you look at that first half. Forget about the second half for a second. You guys understand. Kyle, you know this, bro. Man, he pulled and, a couple passes out of his pocket. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know what? On, buddy. You know what he's going to walk away thinking as he's sitting I home got with it. his family on the couch? Yeah. I still got it. Yeah. So, for Eli... Okay, for him, yes, but is there a team you think that would say, I want Eli Manning as my starter in 20? 
2020? Like, I believe there's a team that will allow him to compete for the job. Mm. And, I, and I'm, forget about starting. I don't think Eli is willing to walk into a facility and say, I'm, I'm going to compete. He's too old for that. Uh -huh. mm. He's a made man. So that's the question. Is he going to go somewhere where they say, hey, we're going to use you right now, or is he going to have to compete? And I don't think he wants we'll to. We'll revisit this conversation. More to come on Good Morning Football, the best defensive player, casual.